more than six reps a set, keeping it clean. So we're, we're gonna be getting that strength work from the back levers and that nervous system adaptation. Really gonna be working on that muscular hypertrophy, those type two muscle fibers. None of y'all stopping me, don't need to ask. Chopping trees, planting seeds, planting schemes. Crossing nines, stopping T's. Lines are blurred, I cannot see. For I die, I'm top three. For I die, I'm top three. He's telling me how many reps I gotta do. Okay. Okay. What is going on, YouTube? You are back with the Prez. I am not in home base today. I'm actually out in Pennsylvania for the weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. So, happy Memorial Day weekend to all my veterans out there. All my current military personnel appreciate the support always guys and like always so typically a Memorial Day workout is gonna be a Murph routine right very standard army routine crossfit routine excellent routine you guys could do so if you guys aren't training back today go hit a Murph workout right it's a full body routine one mile run 100 push-ups 200 pull-ups 300 squats or something like that order right and then another mile run all with a 50 pound vest I'm not doing the Murph challenge today. I got my rings out. I'm gonna be doing a back workout and we're gonna start with back lever raises or back lever pulls, right? Now, as you guys know, I'm actually weighing in a little heavier than normal, 170, 171 pounds right now, which is typically about 10 to 15 pounds heavier than I am typically when I train on the rings and I haven't trained on the rings in a while, right? So we're gonna be doing some skill work to start. We're gonna go for some strength skill work, three sets of three back lever raises, right? So I'm gonna teach you guys how to utilize a band for this first exercise. If you guys can't do full straight arm back lever pulls yet, this is what you wanna do. So you wanna get a band, any band, I'm using my black band today because I haven't done this movement in a while and it's still pretty intense right now for myself, right? So we wanna anchor this band on one ring just like you would anchor it on a bar. So this ba band is anchored on here. Then all you're gonna do is place it around the next ring and your hand is gonna hold that band in place, right? So now look, my right arm is holding the ring down, the band down on this ring. This band is anchored on this ring right here, right? So now guys, we're gonna get into a back lever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip around the band so the band is gonna land right on our torso area, right? So we're gonna go for isometric holds and straight arm pulls, so watch. Pull back to vertical. All right, like I said, I'm moving for three sets of three repetitions. This is gonna be very intense for myself. Strength building, excellent for the shoulder health. And again, it's gonna really work on that straight arm strength. That whole posterior chain is gonna be lit up. Very good for the lower back. So we're taking about three minute breaks in between each set here. And remember, especially because you're using the band, you wanna to try to maintain perfect form, perfect alignment. Don't land too high, don't go too low. Try to be completely horizontal. You wanna be parallel to the floor. So three sets, three reps of the first routine of the day. Three minute breaks, let's go. False grip the whole time, guys. So remember this guys, if you guys are trying to get better at a certain calisthenic skill, you should be training those movements or those skills first in your workout sessions, or you should dedicate exclusive workout sessions just to practicing those skills. Because remember, skill training is gonna be very central nervous system activated, right? Meaning the central nervous system is what's gonna have to learn the movement pattern. Your body's gonna have to get stronger in specific ranges of motion, especially when there's an isometric component to the movement, right? When you're doing these back lever holds, your body's gotta have to know where to stop in space, where to be static, and how to produce force from that isometric hold, right? So that's gonna be a lot of nervous system training. So if you wanna train that at the end of the routine, it's gonna be very counterproductive, and you're probably gonna be training with sloppy form and bad mechanics. So save the skill work 
for the beginning of the workouts and don't do too much of it, right? If you're not dedicating a whole session to it, like I said, just go in there, do three, maybe five sets with long break periods, and then you can get into more volume work or hypertrophy work if that's the goal as well. But if you wanna dedicate one full session just to skills, that's typically what I would do. But this is my third set here, and this is a back workout for me, so I'm not dedicating the whole workout just to these back levers. And I'm utilizing the bands, remember, just to get my body back used to the movement, get my body back in the proper uh, you know, planes of motion and proper mechanics and recruitment patterns to get this movement down clean again. So, last set here, guys. All right, three sets, three back lever pulls done. Like I said, this is a full back workout now. Now I'm gonna get into more hypertrophy work, volume work, really pump up the body right now, work on building some muscle. All right, so the skill work, strength work is done. Because remember, skill work is also gonna be strength work. You're training the nervous system, you're training your body to be stronger in a specific range of movement or a specific plane of motion. So now we're gonna go on some hypertrophy and strength work. I got the 40 pound vest strapped on, ring, chin ups, aiming for three sets, maybe four sets, six to 10 reps, let's go. All right, keep it at an easy six reps today. Three sets of six, two minute breaks today. Remember, this is a straight up pull or back focus routine. You don't need many movement patterns. And remember, like I said, you always gotta train vertical and horizontal pulling movements. Now those back levers are actually gonna count as a horizontal pulling. And remember, vertical, you're pulling up. Horizontal is more of a row. When you're in that back lever plane, you're more horizontal and you're really working on that lat thickness as well. So three sets, vertical pulling. I will do one more horizontal movement for more volume to finish off with some biceps. Right into some L sit pulls. <sighs> Woo. And you guys see how I actually regress into that last rep into a knee tuck. Extremely tough. Lats are extremely fatigued right now. Remember those straight arm back lever pulls. They're gonna stress the lats a lot too. They're gonna stress all the pulling movements or the, all the pulling muscles as well. And remember, don't get it twisted. If your goal or if you wanna be a calisthenic athlete, remember calisthenics means body control, right? You wanna be able to control and master your body. So if you also wanna be big and aesthetic, you gotta find a way to balance the two, right? Because the bigger and the bulkier you get, typically the harder it is to move your body through space, right? Because you know, now you're limited range of motions. So don't use those as excuses and make sure you train smart. So that's how, I, my goal always is to be 
as big and muscular as possible, as well as being aesthetic. And I tend to sometimes lose the thought of, you know, I gotta be able to control my body through space as well. So you'll see me now focusing more on the skill work again, really get my body back in tune with moving through space, being really in control, as well as trying to put on muscle at the same time. So two exercises done, back lever pulls, and now weighted ring chin-ups. So we're gonna do a vertical movement. Uh, we're gonna go back to another horizontal rowing exercise now for volume, and then finish off with some isolation. Let's go. Remember, bringing your body into that L position is gonna greatly increase the, uh, the intensity on the lats. It's gonna force you to be more upright. It's gonna force the erectors in the posterior chain to work even harder. All right, guys, moving back to another horizontal pulling exercise. So remember, the first movement of the day, the back lever pulls. That's predominantly gonna be working strength and nervous system adaptation. Then we went on to our main vertical pulling movement, the 40 pound ring chins, and that's gonna be predominantly working on hypertrophy as well as strength. Because remember, we were only hitting six reps a clip, three sets, so the volume was relatively low. The breaks were about three minutes, and the intensity was pretty high, right? I really couldn't have pushed out more than six reps a set, keeping it clean. So we were, we we're gonna be getting that strength work from the back levers and that nervous system adaptation. Really gonna be working on that muscular hypertrophy, those type two muscle fibers on those vertical 40 pound pulls, and now we're gonna get into some more volume, some pump work, uh, slower break, um, shorter break periods here, 60 to max 90 seconds, depending on how many reps I get. And now we're gonna really focus on controlling the movement, slow eccentric, squeezing, three sets of rows now, body weight. I'm only gonna film one because I don't want this video to be too long. And these rows now, remember, now we're working on hyper, uh, more hypertrophy time under tension. You wanna slow the movement down, right? So these sets, if you're hitting 12 to 15 reps a clip, they should be taking you minimum 45 seconds to up to a minute because now you really want to, again, like I said, focus on slowing down the movement, feeling the muscles, squeeze and contract. All right, three sets, body weight rows, done. I hit 15, 15, 12 for sets one, two, and three, and I kept the break 60 seconds. I really started to feel a lot of lactic acid building up in my back. By the third set, my biceps were swollen, my biceps were starting to feel it. Because remember, anytime you're doing a pulling movement, you're gonna be getting bicep flexion. Anytime you get bicep flexion, there's gonna be bicep involvement. So after a while of hitting those high reps, 15, 15, 12 with very short breaks, the back is gonna be blown up and you're gonna to start to feel it in the biceps as well, especially if you're doing them on the rings and you're getting that pronated grip on the bottom and supinated to neutral when you come up. It's gonna be a lot more bicep flexion as well. So if you guys wanna really build bigger arms, train on the rings. So now we're gonna get into some more bicep isolation, which is a movement, well, this is an exercise I've been doing a lot lately. And as of late, I've had almost zero elbow pain so one thing I always neglected with my training was training direct movements for my bicep and triceps. My arms were always naturally big. 
So I tended to avoid training them in isolation just because I didn't want to have, I didn't want them to be disproportionate to my body. But it's only logical as your muscles get stronger and bigger around the joints that it's smart to train the joints and the tendons themselves, right? So now I'm gonna go into more bodyweight isolations or I've been doing a lot more on the rings and I've noticed a lot better range of motion in my elbows, a lot less pain in both elbows. So remember, you're not only training the muscle, but we're also training the tendons to be stronger when we're doing movements like this. So I'm only gonna film one set and demonstrate exactly how these bodyweight ring bicep curls should be done for isolation. I'm not gonna film all three sets and this is gonna be the end of the routine, guys. Like I said, for training back, you don't have to do 100 exercises, right? You're gonna train, or I'm gonna train back again, probably two to three days from now, and I'll hit different movements, right? I'll probably do heavier weighted pull-ups on a straight bar. Maybe I'll do inverted rows on a higher incline. And again, it's the same movement patterns, very re repeated over and over, progressively overloading, right? You don't have to do 10 different exercises for your back to hit in one movement, in one, ex in one workout for that matter, to try to target it from different angles, right? That's gonna lead to overtraining and you're not gonna be able to hit it again as effectively on the next session. So, ring isolation bicep curls now, guys. So what you wanna do, you don't want the rings too high, right? So I typically like to have them set up just in the mid of my, mid of my body, right? And I'm gonna be facing away from you guys. So, this movement, remember, you wanna be using just the heels of your toes to keep your body in contact with the floor. So we're gonna grab the rings, we're gonna get into a nice false grip. We're just gonna literally, all I'm doing, look, I just let my body back up, right? So the more you go down on an angle, the harder it's gonna be. So, full grip, lay out. You want your butt, oh, one other thing, guys. See how I have the rings straight now? You wanna start this movement by twisting the rings when you grab them. So, look, I'm gonna twist them so the rings start twisted, but then when I come out and supinate, the straps are straight now. If I were to grab them straight to start, and then supinated, I would have been getting a twisted strap causing friction. So start this movement with the rings twisted when you get that false grip, then step out and then supinate and the rings and the straps will be straight. So I'm on the heels of my toes here, guys. Elbows stay high. We're just gonna curl to the forehead. I caught 10 reps, I'm gonna go for two more sets of 10. Another exercise, I'm gonna take 60 to max 90 second breaks here. Here you wanna really pump up the blood to the arms, really work on full lockout stretching and getting that full tendon engagement. And that's a wrap guys. Three main back movements, back lever pulls, 40 pound ring chins, and body weight rows. Three movements, literally targeting, targeting vertical pulling and horizontal pulling going to help you work on that V taper, that wideness of the back, and as well as the thickness of the back. Really, you're making you, you know, more aesthetic, right? Because you don't want to just be wide and, and skinny. You want to be thick, wide, and muscular, and lean all together. And then some bicep isolations for bicep and tendon health. Try this routine now. Get yourself a pair of rings, guys. Look, there ain't no bars around, no parks with bar setups around here. Found a, like I always say, guys, best place for me I always found to hang the rings on a basketball hoop because 99% of hoops are going to have this back bar that gets absolutely no use perfect height to hang the rings we could raise the rings really high get full clearance on all your exercises and the straps are long enough to give you all the way high rings and bring the rings all the way down to the floor for more groundwork so try this routine out guarantee you're going to love it. you're going to have a crazy pump and you're just gonna keep getting stronger. And the more you train on the rings, in general, your body awareness is gonna go up, right? You're gonna get better and better of knowing where your body is in space. The rings bring that instability aspect to it, force you to be more in tune with your body, force you to be more tense all around, keep that core tight and control the limbs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this routine. If you have a question or comment, leave it in the comment section. I always get back to you guys. Like the video, it helps YouTube share the video with the world. 
If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Share it with your friends and family. Like always, guys, I appreciate the support. Peace out. Bar Naturals. No sad story, I ain't here for a symphony, no sympathy. When I was on the bench, you wouldn't sit with me. Now I'm on the court and I'm balling, my time's coming.